So my name is Jared Hopes, and uh, I often hear this sentence, we, we want to be more agile, and that's the inspiration for this talk, and I kind of wonder if people really mean uh, they want to be agile. Uh, I'm not sure, I think the meaning of the word has been a bit lost. I don't think people mean that at all. I think they just want to be made happy. I think, <laughs> I think it doesn't really matter um, if it's, you know, let's just say waterfall, agile, uh, scrum, Kanban, it doesn't matter as long as we, we're fixing the problems, that's what they, they really want. And um, like I said, I think the, the, the agile has become a bit of a cliche. So I'd like to cover what I think agile is and a bit of the characteristics from teams. Um, so this is the cheetah. It travels at 120 kilometers per hour, touching the ground once every 10 meters. And it obviously eats prey, um, but the prey is a lot slower than it. And um, because of that, the, the animals that it chases can actually turn sharper corners. And because they touch the ground more often and go a bit slower, they can change their path. And that makes the prey more agile than the cheetah. So I think agile is not really about going fast, but about responding to change. <laughs> and uh, the next slide we see. <laughs> <laughs> so like babies, um, all projects are unique. Um, something that works on one project may not work on the other. But there are some common characteristics that we see across all projects. And for me, the most important one is, to, is this idea of a, a Kaizen culture. And without this um, in the team, you, you're pretty much lost no matter what you're doing. The team must want to improve and, and continuously make small improvements, and they must all contribute to that. And if you have this in your team, then people want feedback. And the best possible place for software engineers to get feedback is from their users. So we must figure out um, how to deliver the, the smallest slice to our users so we can um, deliver them the smallest thing as soon as possible. And once that is done, do the next smallest thing as possible. So using things like story mapping to help us identify these small chunks of work. And um, this, this idea of keeping things small uh, goes right throughout the stack. Um, this is actually an award-winning short story. It's, it's only seven words long, but it makes sense. And depending on what we're doing, we can break things down to smaller and smaller chunks that still make sense depending on the context, like unit testing. Um, unit testing can be um, quite small, and there should be. So for developers that don't know, this is a JUnit um, green bar. Um, and, and still these days, we have developers that don't do testing. They feel like they can just pass it over to testers, and if a bug makes it into production, they can blame the testers for not finding the defect. And I think that's crazy, especially with great tools like Cucumber. <laughs> so, yeah, with tools like this, we, we have no, no excuse anymore. And testers and developers need to work together, and um, especially heading towards a, a, a continuous deployment era. And then um, the next thing I'd like to talk about are architects. Uh, I think they are quite unfortunate to have the name architect because we compare them to the real you know, business, uh, to, to building architects where they need to get involved at the beginning and come up with a design for us. But um, software architects, they can't really do that because we have these changing requirements. And um, we shouldn't expect them to come up with these big sort of designs at the, at the, at the start. Um, I think we should maybe call them you know, doctors or surgeons, where if we have a problem, we, we go to them and then they help us um, with their knowledge of system design. They help us get rid of this, this problem. And a, a nice way to identify um, problems in software is actually to use visualizations, like this one from Code City, where we can see some really big classes, and the dark ones are the complex ones. So he has a really big complex class, and we can use architects' knowledge to, to help um, resolve those sorts of issues. The other problem, well, the, the other thing I'd like to bring up is um, Scrum Masters. So you are not uh, psychologists. Sure, there's these core values and things like that, but if there's some deep underlying problem um, that, so basically they need to solve things the team brings up. If there is a deep underlying problem, uh, they, they're not qualified to deal with that. So just deal with real problems that the team has and stop, stop getting too fluffy with this stuff. Uh, managers, if you want estimates that are correct, you have to accept a range. Estimates are meant to reflect um, uncertainty, so managers shouldn't be upset when they do do that. 
So uh, a, a friend of mine and I have been doing some courses in improvised acting, mm -hmm. and uh, I think it's quite quite impressive where you can take um, a, give people very little knowledge and some simple rules in there, and they form some quite interesting and impressive behaviour, which is really nice to see. And I think that the key to it is that these guys um, really want to work together, and that's that's what makes it work. And um, when you do this, basically you try something, you look if people are following you, and if they're not, um, then, you, then you need to change. And it's not about being scared of failing, but when you do fail, um, do it quickly and cheaply, so it doesn't affect the show very much. Um, one thing we did was, one of the shows, our facilitator left us to facilitate ourselves, and actually that show didn't go so well, so at the end people were saying that they missed some structure, and I think that's the structure that Scrum gives us. And talking about Scrum, uh, I'm going to end on that and talking about Kanban. And this next image is representative of that. So um, first, just to the Kanban guys, basically thanks to them for reminding us that there's not just one way to, to work towards an agile way. And that it would be nice if they didn't undo a lot of the, the good work the Scrum guys have done. And uh, that pretty much wraps up my talk. And thanks to these people for providing the images, and thanks to you guys for, for listening.